I'm Mike Tolliver. 22 years ago, the church in Kiev, Ukraine, was planted from Moscow by Andy and Tammy Fleming. A year later, the Soviet Union had broken up and the Ukraine became an independent nation. God has built an amazing church in the last 22 years of over 2,000 members. It's our largest congregation on the continent of Europe. The Ukraine is plagued with corruption and the tensions of a struggling economy. By late 2013, it reached a boiling point when hundreds of thousands of protesters gathered at the main square in Kiev. With great sadness, we watched as the protests became violent and catapulted the country into a state of instability. Tensions have run high and there has been great division between Ukraine and Russia over Crimea. The instability has spread across the eastern part of the Ukraine and there is now heavy artillery fighting going on. They have already had to evacuate the disciples from three different cities. The fragile Ukrainian economy has taken even a larger hit. In the Ukraine right now, many have lost their jobs and for those who do have jobs, many are not receiving their full salaries. Meanwhile, the cost of gas and other products has jumped 50% in the last four months. We rejoice that the ICOC congregations in Russia and the Ukraine are making every effort to maintain a strong spiritual unity. This was demonstrated last week when two of the churches in Russia took up contributions to help the churches in the Ukraine. Still, our churches in the Ukraine are struggling. With the approval of our evangelists and elders service teams, Sean Wooten, lead evangelist in Kiev, sent us this appeal. My name is Sean Wooten and I'm standing here in Kiev, Ukraine. And I just want to uh, extend a big thank you from all the brothers and sisters here for all your prayers. And I know many of you have fasted uh, to really uh, strengthen and unify uh, the country and to bring peace. I'm actually standing right now in front of the building that we used to meet in. It was one of the buildings that was set on fire uh, during the protests. The church is, is uh, meeting together as much as possible. We are so thankful to God that he is faithful and takes care of us. But as you can imagine, the, the country um, right now is an extremely difficult situation. I know many of you have contacted me. What can you do to help the, the churches in the Ukraine right now? Uh, we want to ask for those who, who have that opportunity or the ability right now to take up just a free will offering um, to help with the needs um, here in the Ukraine. We would be very, very thankful. Uh, we love you very much. We're very thankful to be a part of our fellowship around the world. And uh, we know God is in control and we know God will take care of us. We love you. And thank you for the help. Brothers and sisters, we have joined together before to help churches in need, such as in Haiti, the Ivory Coast, and the Philippines. A cry for help has now gone up in Kiev, and it is time once again to pray and to step up decisively at this crucial hour. Funds donated will be used to provide assistance to those who are fleeing the fighting, as well as to enable the church to retain its staff, meet its expenses, and continue to rent space so they can meet together. For more information on how to give as a church or as an individual, go to www.disciplestoday.com. Thank you in advance for your kindness. As we negotiate these very dangerous times, please keep Kiev and all the Ukrainian churches in your prayers. God bless.